Scientists uncovered dinosaur evidence that might prove we had it all wrong about the dinosaurs. Has any creature, living or dead, truly captivated the world in the way that dinosaurs have? Ever since our discovery of these great beasts, both science and popular culture have grown enamored with the mere thought of their existence. We fill museums with their bones, make movies about them, and even try to dress like them come Halloween. But what if everything we thought we knew about our beloved dinosaurs turned out to be wrong? When one paleontologist began excavating a dig site in the mountains of North Dakota, he soon discovered a lost piece of dinosaur history that may change everything we thought we knew about the creatures that once ruled the world. Most people would consider a preoccupation with bones concerning, though Robert De Palma's love of the dead and buried is anything but peculiar. An aspiring paleontologist, the 37-year-old managed to turn his lifelong passion into a curator position for the Palm Beach Museum of Natural History. But De Palma is perhaps best known for the widely publicized discovery he made near Bowman, North Dakota in 2012. After receiving a tip from a private fossil collector, De Palma and his team began excavating a site along the well-known Hell Creek Formation. Initially, De Palma felt the site, dubbed Tannis, had little promise, something the collector had made him privy to prior to the excavation. However, after returning to Tannis in 2013, the paleontologist discovered there was more to this unassuming patch of rock than met the eye. Just a few meters below the surface, De Palma discovered a host of rare and unusual fossils, including those of species he'd claimed to have never seen before. It was an incredible find, though one set of bones in particular caught De Palma's eye and left him positively stumped. Beneath this skeleton of freshwater paddlefish, De Palma discovered the tooth of a mosasaur, an enormous reptilian predator that made its home in the oceans of the early Cretaceous period. This puzzled De Palma and his team, for there was no way this creature could have existed in the fresh waters of prehistoric North Dakota. The layout of the find was also unusual. The fossils deposited haphazardly and some skeletons even buried vertically in the dirt. Combined with the fact the tektites, small bits of natural glass created by meteor impacts, were also present, everyone was left scratching their head. Then a light bulb went out. Could the tektite fragments found in the Tannis deposit have been scattered here by the asteroid that wiped out the dinosaurs? While some researchers would be quick to accept such a theory, the plausibility of the scenario isn't exactly cut and dry. The widely held belief that an asteroid impact caused the Cretaceous Paleogene extinction event is primarily based on the presence of the KT layer. This 66 million year old band of Earth stretches over nearly the entire globe and contains a high level of iridium, an element primarily found in asteroids. The theory is also supported by the Chicxulub Crater, a 112-mile impression in the Yucatan Peninsula that contains the same minerals that make up as the KT layer. Therefore, most scientists assume that the asteroid that created this layer scattered the iridium debris that ultimately wiped out the dinosaurs. If this were the case, then one would expect to find plenty of fossils in the KT layer. After all, it was during this time that nearly all life on Earth went extinct. However, this actually isn't true at all. Hardly any fossils have ever been found in this layer of rock. In fact, most fossils are found about 10 feet below the KT layer, which, geologically speaking, would amount to thousands of years before the death of these creatures and the fateful asteroid impact. Therefore, it seems highly unlikely that an extraterrestrial object reduced every last dinosaur to rubble. Proponents of this alternate theory do still believe that an asteroid impact finished off the last of these prehistoric creatures, though they propose that factors like large-scale volcanic activity and climate change had already wiped out most of the dinosaurs by this point. However, according to De Palma, the Tannis find was the key to finally putting this debate to bed. Not only were the fossils he discovered located within the KT layer, but their haphazard placement suggested they were deposited here just moments after the asteroid struck. With this information in mind, De Palma posited that the mile-high tsunamis created by the impact 
must have traveled up river valleys and into freshwater bodies, which is how the Mosasaur tooth came to be here. This was big news. Eager to share his discovery with the world, De Palma sat down with the New Yorker to share the exclusive details of his historic find. However, as soon as the story broke in April 2019, the paleontology community grew outraged. Many of De Palma's colleagues were upset that the paleontologist had chosen to share his story with the New Yorker instead of a reputable scientific journal. De Palma later published his discovery in Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, though many felt this account was significantly less detailed than his New Yorker piece. Even prior to this, however, De Palma was considered by some to be a controversial figure in the world of paleontology. In 2015, he introduced a new species of dinosaur he'd recovered from Hell Creek Formation called Dakota Raptor. Though after presenting the completed skeleton, it was discovered one of the bones belonged to a turtle. De Palma also stirred up controversy with his business practices, as he retains all control of his specimens even after they've been placed in museums and university collections. He also reportedly funds his fieldwork by creating replicas of his finds and selling them to private collectors. But the strangest discrepancy of all may be De Palma's record of the discovery itself. While the paleontologist and his team have made claims about the large number of dinosaur fossils uncovered near the surface of the Tanis deposit, his article in PNAS only mentions one example in a supplementary document. As of now, additional papers on Tanis are being prepared that will hopefully clear up the confusion surrounding De Palma's find. Until then, one can only wonder if De Palma's discovery will truly change history or simply wind up as the fabrication of another would-be hero in search of fame and glory.